Memorial Day, everybody. We are here in beautiful, sunny Ferndale, California for the finish of the Kinetic Grand Championship 2023. I'm Katie Texas here with my co-host Shoshana. Hi, Shoshana. Hello, so happy to be here. Oh, thanks for joining us. <laughs> uh, so we're just a little way away from the fun, um, the fun at the finish line, but you're gonna get to see all the action. And uh, Shoshana, you are a rutabaga fairy princess, is that correct? I am a rutabaga fairy princess, absolutely. Nice. Okay. <laughs> Uh, what does that job entail? Well, I uh, spearheaded the Kinetic Fairy Collective to do okay. nice things for racers around on the course and beforehand and help with little nice things here and there. And I love being part of Spectator's Choice to help talk to people and find out what their favorite sculptures are and why they're excited about kinetics. Cool. Uh, so right now, um, it, it, we are sitting near the finish line, but the machines have not started coming across yet. Um, with the really rocking music I'm hearing here going on. Can you hear that still? It sounds fantastic. Wonder if this, is, <laughs> this is exciting everywhere. Um, so the machines have, the teams have uh, left Crab Park where the finish line was last night. They have crossed Fern Bridge uh, because this year they're not crossing the Eel River. Um, the, the water's too high. Yeah. It's been a very rainy spring, lots of snow melt coming down. Uh, but more important than the river being high and fast is that the um, a lot of debris has washed downstream and the the exit side of the river is actually just really really covered with trees and all kinds of things that are impassable last year my husband got to be a golden flipper going over in the eel river so oh really oh wow <laughs> he was so looking forward to that he's racing this year and, <laughs> and i don't think we've had a golden flipper just yet not yet hmm. uh what we do have is a little bit of a highlight reel from um from the first couple days of the race you know, we've been out to Dead Man's Drop and the water crossing, but we're gonna go ahead and show you just a little bit of what's happened so far, uh, some, somewhere on the course between Arcata and here. Okay, so we got some, here we're looking at some of the pageantry from the plaza, there's the Grateful Squid, um, the, the bees, we have multiple uh, Plan B. multiple teams with very similar themes this year. It's oh. Like, oh, there you are. <laughs> oh, and there's happy birthday, and there's the apple peddlers. So it seems like we've got- Those were yellow jackets, not to be. They were they yellow jackets, jackets they were the not bad guys. <laughs> oh, I see, so they're bad guys. Two bee teams and a okay. yellow jacket team. And there's happy birthday uh, in the cozy coop pinata. Didn't actually make it off the plaza. The kids really loved the pinata. That was great. <laughs> oh, and they had a pinata, they right, did. for people smashing. <laughs> yeah. So the what squid. did uh, we got the squid there? The grateful squid. What did they do for their pageantry? I think they were one of the very last ones. They didn't get a chance to do it. They had to do it later. Mm. Oh, and there's the rat rod fun guys machine. Uh, they had a bit of trouble going down Dead Man's Drop, actually got to the bottom and crashed and uh, broke a wheel right oh. off the machine. Spawn of the Dead was pretty incredible. <laughs> uh, Fun Guy's machine is repaired though and they did get back on the course and they did make it to the finish line yesterday. A little late and uh, with some big band-aids, some big band-aid welds, like literally welds that look oh. like band-aids uh, on the machine there. Oh, look at the pretty eyelashes I love on the, the machine with screen. eyelashes that opens and closes. <laughs> Super cute. And bubbles. And bubbles, can't go wrong with bubbles. And there's actually, if you look closely, there's a little mermaid stuck in the uh, inside that squid. I did see that. <laughs> I didn't see that till day the, two, though. Because that's the squid's mouth. That means that the squid is eating the little mermaid. He is eating the little mermaid. But those giant squid are brutal. Oh, Caddy Bumpus, whose name is Eileen. Eileen, yeah, yes. Eileen because she leans. <laughs> yes. Eileen the Caddy Wampus. This dog was helping me when I was wielding ribbons and Really? That dog was so mellow. <laughs> the Woody here with uh, Lucas Thornton, all made out of reclaimed materials. Oh, Very cool. Codfish. There's a pinata in action. <laughs> it took a minute for kids to come out, but that was the that was the pageantry. It was mostly kids enjoying the pinata and getting candy. Is that what they did? <laughs> yes. Oh, that's great. I, they had it um, at their camp at Crab Park last night. They had a birthday party going on. They had like <laughs> uh, little little hats. I got oh, one little hats. And they got uh, oh, cupcakes. That's my daughter and my husband. <laughs> oh, the Party. good one. Like utter nonsense is yours? Yes. <laughs> this is your daughter and your husband. And they're acing so far. Are oh, they, they still have their the ace? Swing kids with a kinetic uh, yeah, I ambulance. Think, <laughs> I think being an actual dance troupe might be cheating. 
Oh, they were so good. <laughs> oh, but this one, this is the star of the show right here. That's my that's, favorite. <laughs> that's the, definitely the best pageantry. But they of the had day. a dramatic reenactment from Tom Boswell's actual heart attack he had. Yeah, he pulled me out to dance too. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. <gasps> and then they all. Uh... So what are you? What are oh, you looking speech, for? Please. You are. Are you are the pageantry judge? Are you? Oh um, no, I, I usually hang out with the pageantry judges at the beginning because I'm trying to stay in one place for spectators choice but also champions of tomorrow judging some team teams cool well i hear a rumor that uh one of the very first teams is already at the finish line that's exciting because, oh here they are um uh, they're all holding How they're exciting. all holding at the um at the fairgrounds for just a minute until one o'clock when they were let go and now they're coming across the finish line there's going to be a big clump of them here oh, live hello. wrong and Dr. Teeth and the Electric Mayhem back there. Those, that ambulance, <laughs> kinetic, medic friends. Getting that glory <laughs> at the finish line. I think this is one of the best. Oh, uh, live wrong. Oh, it is live wronger. This is like for one day a year, Ferndale has the best party in the county. Ferndale's a lovely, quiet little like gingerbread hamlet nestled in the trees. And then we bring this craziness out here because of course, this is where it was born. This is where the, the very first kinetic race was. Oh, it's exciting. Liv Ronger has a lot right. They've been making bad choices throughout the whole weekend. Yeah, I've noticed that. <laughs> they really they really live live the message <laughs> wrongly. Intentionally bad choices. So we're looking right there at the finish line. Uh, lots of these teams still have their aces intact. In fact, the, the first several, you're going to find the fastest ones because they're trying to get the best time right now. Um, in a little while, so the fact that you're the utter nonsense yes. was in the first part of the pack there, that's <laughs> great, that's, that's a good sign. Do you know how, um, how's their speed? Oh, I don't know their time. I know they're very happy to still be maintaining their ace. They, that was their, they just did the water test last Saturday, so art started Tuesday. It's been just coming together. They rehabbed a machine, and I'm so proud. <laughs> they rehabbed a machine? Where did they get the machine? Uh, they got the machine through a kinetic friend, through uh, Swing Kids, through Eureka High School. Oh, that's so cool. So it was missing a few pieces. It was resting in a corner, and they brought it back to life. That's great. Yeah, so a lot of times the, the actual machine, the actual vehicles are, are reused from year to year, and the teams will just pull off art and put on new art, or, you know, get something out of somebody's backyard that's oh, been yes. moldering since the 90s and, and <laughs> zhuzh it up. The Kinetic there. Madness Band. Yay. Uh, it's made up of lots of, um, I almost called them stumbling lumberjacks. Uh, marching lumberjacks. Marching lumberjacks, yes. <laughs> and, and alumni, the, uh, many alumni from the, the, the band up at Cal Poly come back every year just to do kinetics. They were actually rehearsing in the backyard of the house behind mine <laughs> one time. And I, I was like, I was sitting there on my back porch and I heard someone playing Elvira. I was like, oom bop, oom. I was like, what? That sounds like the Kinetic Madness Band. Nice, plenty of glory there. I see uh, Rutabaga Princess Aristides there. We see Rutabaga Royals all over the course. We have a new queen, of course, who was um, crowned on Saturday evening. That's Queen Felix Flex. Oh, fantastic. Oh, untrained. Here comes untrained. Teenager team from Six Rivers High and Arcata High School combo. Rutabaga Queen Betty Crafter as one of their designated adults. Taking a glory lap there. <laughs> Really that intersection is actually the intersection of Main Street and Brown, named after Hobart Brown, the glorious founder of Kinetic Sculpture Racing, <laughs> uh, whose gallery is just behind the bandstand there. Um, you can see it's currently Mind's Eye Manufactory. Uh, it's turned from being Hobart's gallery and studio and home into being a home for many, many artists. There's artist lofts up there, as well as um, Mind's Eye, where they make traditional uh, kayaks, traditional skin kayaks. Cowpocalypse. Cowpocalypse. Do we have two? We have two cow themes. One cow theme. One cow theme. But there's a lot of twinning. <laughs> there is. We were just talking about that. There's a lot of machines where there's like two machines with the, basically the same theme. <laughs> two trains. Got two trains, two oh, sets of bees. Yes, two sets of bees. And, um, Two, what are the other two? We have so much twinning this year. <laughs> See them here they come. 
Now, the original race was actually on this street right here. Oh, the Pope. Uh, Pope up the jam coming across. Uh, does not have an ace. So we don't have, um, this has all been like, <laughs> everything's happening very fast today. So, uh, we don't have scores right now. Oh, there's the utter nonsense. Yay, utter nonsense. So proud of my daughter. <laughs> she might have just aced her first race. That would Aww, be insane. <laughs> that would be amazing. I was so happy they got off the plaza. <laughs> yeah. No fakes. <laughs> Amazing how much of it comes down to a supportive team. <laughs> oh, <laughs> An yeah. Amazing infrastructure that you build. <laughs> and and plenty of uh, like three in one or you know like the like yes. <laughs> chain lubricant. And lots of duct TV tape. Blast. <laughs> lots of duct tape. Um, yeah, duct tape, uh, chewing gum. <laughs> Anything you can stick it together with. Oh, but to ace, yeah, to ace is a huge accomplishment. Just managing to do that is an enormous um, engineering and athletic challenge, too. That's Just simply it. doing it <laughs> on a machine that's totally functional is hard because you know it's way way heavier than a bicycle. Um, I aced one time. I, I aced one time. The machine that I aced on, totally naked with no art whatsoever, just the bare bones tricycle with flotation and all the equipment you were required to carry, uh, weighed 200 pounds just by itself. And then you put art on that, you put the pilot on that, you put a couple extra gallons of water on that, and it's a real feat to get all that weight uh, from one town to the other. But you've been a part of so many epic teams. <laughs> yes. You know, it's um, racing on Who's Your Daddy, the 10 pilot craft is. Uh, well, when I was racing on it, it wasn't ace-worthy. It wasn't able to news. do it yet. The classical that news and the heroes of Floriopolis. <laughs> um, but it was easier because you have 10 pilots working on it. It's super heavy, but at least you've got 10 people to <laughs> suffer with you. Great. And on that machine, we had uh, two commands, pedal and stop. Uh, because if you say pedal and then stop pedaling, uh, then people get confused. You have to tell, oh, there's Trash Lantis. Trash Lantis, that's such incredible artwork and a very big message about climbing, climate change. Yeah, and last year they were the hump, humpbacks of Notre Dame, those beautiful whales all jumping through, no, the idea being that they had pieces of the last, uh, the last remaining glacier on Earth and the oceans had ridden so far that the tide had come into Notre Dame and the hump, humpbacks were taking it over. Um, this year, it looks like they have a piece of that art. I'm guessing that's you know, with that lovely whale. Um, they just brought it back and turned it into uh, something different, but with a, a message this time about plastics. Yeah, and eating plastic. They, they have some creatures there that are um, somehow biologically connected to coral and human remains that have been in the ocean, and they've come back to life. They eat plastic, so they're chipping away at the plastic problem in the ocean. It's very complicated. They have a newsletter. That's gruesome. But, you know, good, something, you know. It's pretty cool. Sounds like a solution, at They've least, of an imperfect on one. on plastic all weekend. Yeah, that's really entertaining. <laughs> if you go give them plastic, they'll give you a bribe. <laughs> yes. Uh, and I hope you, you uh, folks at home have had a chance to give them some plastic, or at least come out and see part of this race. Um, Lots of great information over there on ConnecticutGrandChampionship.com uh, about how to see the race. But it's a little late now, unless you want to get to Ferndale, um, which is going to be challenging because they've got several roads blocked so that you so that we can all get out here. Um, but uh, right now, the judges are all tallying up their scores. The the goddesses' timers are diligently clicking stopwatches over there at the um, the finish line, and they're getting everything ready so that. Um, they can do the tabulations and they will have an award ceremony. Do you know where the award ceremony is? Over at the Ferndale Fairgrounds. Over at the Ferndale Fairgrounds tonight, which is where they, the machines have been hanging out briefly in between, uh, in between crab parking here. They go Sparky, the good sparky. dog. I love that they actually bring some adoptable animals to the kickoff. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and apparently every year, the, every animal that they bring out ends up adopted. And they do go through the whole real official process. They don't just hand the dog over to some spectators. They, you know, so it's a, they're coming out from the, the Humane Society. Or is it Miranda's? I forget which one they're one of the with. One of the shelters. But they're encouraging you to spay and neuter your pets. And to, uh, if you're going to get an animal, they need to adopt one. So there's plenty out there oh, looking for homes. There's some animals that might be part of their team. <laughs> there you go. Good dogs. <laughs>
So we've probably seen the first rush of like really fast machines that are going for those speed awards and those ace machines that still have their aces intact. Because yeah. they're trying to get a good speed. Um, and then uh, what else are they what are those else are they competing in? Oh, they have art, engineering. And uh, I mean, some of them will get some unexpected awards <laughs> over the course of the race. I love the, the nuanced uh, awards that, that they have at the end, such as the Golden Dinosaur and mm -hmm. the, uh, the one that... Golden Dinosaur, <laughs> the first machine to break down after they leave yes. the plaza. And the one that's like the one that, I don't know what it's called, but the 632 award, is that right? The 632 award, the first ace team to come in after the course close on day one. A dubious award. Nobody <laughs> wants that one. They just barely missed their ace. The other award that. nobody wants is the Poor Pitiful Me Award, <laughs> yes. which is for the one, the uh, team that complains the most. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> is there a mediocre award also, like the one that's mm -hmm. right in the middle? Yeah, so uh, everybody gets scores in art, speed, engineering, and pageantry, pageantry yes. and um, only art, speed, and engineering count towards grand champion. So the person, the team that gets the best overall score across those three categories is going to win the the big title and the big trophy. Yes. Um, but anybody, and, and you have to get an ace to win that. You have yes. to, you know, actually have an ace. You have to have completed the race in time, following all the rules. Um, but any team can win what's called the mediocre award, and that's dead middle. <laughs> in the pack. So when they lay out all the all the teams uh, front to back with their grand championship points, whoever's <laughs> right, right in the middle. middle. <laughs> that one's funny. <laughs> and it's the best award because you can't possibly plan for it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the one for a little guy. One for the little guy. And for a smaller that, sculpture, right? Because mm -hmm. a lot of times you have these huge teams. Um, the folks who've been doing it forever, maybe they've got some good sponsorships lined up and they're able to throw a lot of resources at their artwork or, you know, at costumes and things like that. And then there's, you know, this is a, it's a, it's an art and a sport for everyone. So there's plenty of folks who are just building something in their garage. People who are, <laughs> yes. who are getting old machines and rehabbing them in their backyard. Yeah, those and no, no budget, low budget productions. <laughs> yes. Exactly. And you want, we want to have some, um, some recognition for those teams. Because they all do it for the glory. Lots and lots of glory. <laughs> Plenty of glory to be had, that's for sure. Um, there's the You Clever Rascal Award, which is for non-ace team uh, with exceptional engineering. Cool. And I like that one. Um, I, wanted, I wanted to get that one on Who's Your Daddy, but we always tried to ace. <laughs> Uh, and actually, that team did did ace eventually in 2014 or 2016. It was it was racing for years and years, working out those bugs before it actually managed to get an ace. Before the the machine was capable of finishing the race. First, they had to build a water drive that actually worked. And then they had to get it where it was fast enough on the land because it would do great in the sand and the water. But then, on the freeway, it would be you know three four miles an hour. I mean, you're trying to cross half the county. That's just not fast enough. <laughs> but it was fun. Oh, oh here comes Apple's Team oh, Goddess oh, Racing. Oh, there, the bunny. It's hard to see on our monitor a little bit. The bunny on top turns head, the eyelashes, oh, eyes open and close. And it's Yay. such a delightful shade, my favorite shade of, of a kinetic purple. I have some Magenta small children there. who always go for the bright pink one. Nice. Yes. Uh, this, the pilots on this are Kristen and Tina. Uh, Tina actually was on the team that I aced with. Uh, Tina and Charlie Jordan were, were my co-pilots on that three pilot machine. Uh, way back in 2009 is when I got my ace. <laughs> it's the last time I did any real hard work. <laughs> it is a lot of hard work. These people are getting quite a workout. <laughs> oh my goodness, absolutely. Uh, and I know Kristen, um, She's been, you know, of course they both, lots of pilots have been training for months, you know, making sure they get some, some bikes, some cycling in, some hills. You want to get those, uh, get that stamina up, get those leg muscles and working. And some of them don't so much. I know my, the team I'm oh connected with did not train. Did not train. And it's a school day and a work day tomorrow, so that's going to be, <laughs> that's going to be pretty cool. I love the people the next day after. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some people don't train. Some people don't water test. Oh, that, um, no, they did that. <laughs> I saw a, a post online, the Six Rivers, the high school team. Yes. They were posting their water test like a week ago. I was like, what are you teaching these kids? This isn't proper kinetics. That's not really a kinetic team unless you just throw it at the bay 
and see what happens. <laughs> like it should float. <laughs> it probably will float. I was happy they do some bare, like the different ways people make their machines float is fun. There's some that have surfboards, there's some that have um, like pontoons that are inflatable. Some, I, Adam's team ended up using like, barrels, these uh, chemical barrels that they had that were empty from the farm he works on, okay. recycling some things, and they nice. saran wrapped them and wrapped them on, and they stayed great. And I just, it's interesting to see all the different ways that they figure out to make things float or stay. Sure, and then there's just some trade-off for that. Like the barrels, they're easy, there's no transition time, but then they're probably heavier than pontoons. Then they were low a bit. They found that they were kind of low, so they dragged in the sand. So oh. they want to move them up, but otherwise they were pretty happy with how. Yeah, you see teams come up with different solutions for that. There'll be teams where they get in the water and then they will um, lever or crank their machine up. Yes so that they're actually sitting up higher uh, relative to their pontoons once yeah. they get in the water. Because you, you got to think about it, you're going in on your wheels, yes. but then you need to end up resting on that flotation. <laughs> yes. um, and if you're trying to be gentle and not break your machine <gasps> and not fast. go for biggest splash, <laughs> then you, you get in and you might end up basically bellied out where you your, your wheels are no longer touching, but your pontoons are dragging on the ground. So and, how do you? <laughs> right, yeah. so just being able to float, just being able to get on the land, that's, those are two different things. The transition itself is a is a technological challenge. You're going an for the engineering budget challenge. too. <laughs> but yeah. pontoons are expensive. Oh, they are. <laughs> Barrels were free. They're like, we'll do that. <gasps> it! It has arrived. Scary clowns. <laughs> Here it comes. <laughs> uh, that clown head and those hands were actually part of the haunted kinetic lab. <laughs> So this, uh, this is Ken Beidelman's team, Ken, June, uh, and formerly Dwayne Flatmo, but he's retired and sort of half given his spot over to Lucas, uh, Lucas and Blake. Um, and then uh, Lush's team, the, uh, Lush and Malia on the, uh, Ham. Uh, the electric mayhem. mayhem. <laughs> uh, they're all working out of the Kinetic Lab, which is kind of a little artist collective. They have this big warehouse in Arcata where they all have a, a bay of their own. Each team has a bay and they build and then they kind of work together on things and then um, they share the expenses to that. And one of the things they do to raise money is put out a haunted, uh, a haunted house around Halloween time. It's called the Haunted Kinetic Lab. And who is oh, this? Oh, the, Mar the Mars, is the Mars Rover or Roamer? Yeah, Mars the Roamer. They've got a few Martians on there. <laughs> You have to appreciate their perseverance. Huh? Yes, they've got good perseverance. Thank you. <laughs> their curiosity drove them. To discovery? To di <laughs> yes. More geek jokes. <laughs> uh, so teams are going to cross the finish line, and then they have an assigned space over there. There's a photographer who's going to try and catch them all and do a little um, Maddie, Matt Filar, uh, is going to go and do a, a team picture, and so every team gets a picture of themselves with their with their machine, which is really nice. He does such a good job. Yeah, <laughs> in that moment. Gosh, I mean, I just really appreciate the photographers on the course so much. When you're racing, you are so busy just getting everything happening yes. <laughs> um, that you don't have time to stop and take a, a, a team picture or a, you know take a picture at all. And I, I remember. Um, during the time that I was racing, social media was invented. Yes. That's how old I am. <laughs> um, and the fact that I could go race all day and then come home and go online and there was all these pictures of our machine that other people took, it was very exciting. It's like, I could get pictures finally that I didn't have to take myself. And Lost Coast Outpost and North Coast Journal all have nice kinetic uh, your books and slideshows. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Once the Lost Coast Outpost started covering it, and they do really comprehensive coverage, not just a, you know, here's our favorite team or here's this particular interesting, but every single team. Um, they're not sponsoring us or anything. They're just a great local resource. Uh, we will actually, uh, hopefully, in a little while. Andrew Goff from the Las Coast Outpost is going to pop over here and give us a little bit of a race update. We got some, um, there was a racers meeting this morning where they all got an update on who still has their ace. Ah. Uh, of course, if your team still has its ace, you know, <laughs> but we don't know. You know your team still has its I ace. I do, but, but I think. <laughs> I hope so. They didn't tell me specifically, but I think they do. <laughs> yeah, because they didn't cross the Ill River, I would be very surprised if anybody lost their ace between yeah. Crab Park and here. <laughs> I think they probably. It's just road. <laughs> Just a guess. <laughs> Unless they broke down on Fernbridge. Yeah. Um, then they, they should be fine. Yeah. Someone pushed, yeah, somebody disqualified them. 
Uh, ordinarily, teams would leave Crab Park and then they would go to um, the far side of the Eel River where they would come down into the thicket and cross the river under Fernbred. Um, and of course, Kinetics is very responsible. You know, the fact that we get to play in this beautiful backyard, um, all the racers and the, the folks at Kinetic Universe want to make sure that we're leaving uh, our lovely backyard prettier than we found it. So one of the things they do is they actually get a biologist to go out and survey the riverbank to look for likely snowy plover nesting sites for these uh, endangered birds that, that nest all along the river there. And they flag out the appropriate route. So when the teams are on the riverbank, they're not going to um, run into these endangered or threatened species of birds. Because we no love so the no snowy plovers. They're so cute. Yeah. Sorry, my microphone slipped a little bit. Uh -oh. Is kinetic Well, outfits. here we go. The, um, kinetic costumes. <laughs> is it Spawn of the Dead? No, that's the Codfather. Oh, the Codfather. See, there you go, another twin. Two slightly dead fish. <laughs> Father looking good there, doing a glory lap. Everybody likes to come up to the finish line. If there's room, if there's a backup, you kind of got to move through. But if you've got the space, you can do it. Everybody likes to come up and do a, do a little glory <laughs> circle there in front of the band. It's wonderful when they make more than one circle. <laughs> I like that. Was it last year the Peace Peddler came up to do a circle and they flipped? <gasps> That's right. They just <laughs> fell right over. <laughs> I got too excited. <laughs> Like, don't lose it 10 feet from the finish line. <laughs> you know you're not done until you pass the goddess, right? <laughs> yes, you have to keep it together just a little bit extra. And they're going to go um, pop into an assigned parking space, get that team picture probably, and then head over to um, one of the local bars or eateries, <laughs> and they all like high five, like, Woo, we did it, we made it. Uh, and then later on they'll have that award ceremony at the... Um, at Fair the ground. fairgrounds, once the, all the math is done and they have like a big dinner there. Oh, um, that's a great close-up on that. It's a, they're bowls. The eyes are these big, wonderful bowls. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's lights inside. <laughs> Some of them, I love how they're rigged up for lights. Although this race doesn't happen at nighttime, they're all set for lights. For Oh, Dr. Teeth and the Electric Mayhem is all wired up. Mm -hmm. The fringe on the bottom of the machine glows in a programmable way. It's like all fiber optic. And what the bag they gave me glows in the dark. They have some pretty fancy things. That's so cool. Yeah. It's a neat evolution of decorations here. <laughs> I think folks might decorate it up with lights specifically for a crab park. Um, at the end of day two, after they go up and down Table Bluff, teams turn down Cannibal Island Road and head out to a private racer's party on the beach. It's just a it's just camp out because that's where everybody's going. They park um, and then typically teams are required to camp uh, as part of the adventure club part of it. <laughs> um, I don't think they were required this year, but lots of teams do. And uh, it's a really, it's really lovely. Everybody has uh, lots of food and lots of fun, and they sing songs, and everybody like lines up and watches the sunset together, and then cheers. It's, um, it's kind of like a family reunion. Yeah. Lots of these kinetic folks have been doing this event together for just decades, uh, and many of them are traveling around the country. Yes, that also is, doing that. That is great. So, oh, do you know who the furthest traveling team is this time? Oh gosh, I don't know. A team know. from Colorado, I believe. Ma I'm it's sure there's a team here from there's Baltimore, or because um, yeah. there's a there's the Baltimore race in Maryland, and there's usually a team here from there. Definitely folks from Port Townsend, from Ventura, from Corvallis. Our own goddess yes. Jeno is the the head of the Corvallis race. Um, that one happens at coinciding with Da Vinci days. So there's this whole like inventor, renaissance people, um, you know, that balance of art and engineering and math. And oh, a bubble came over. Oh my to gosh. <laughs> one lone, on Main Street. <laughs> one lone bubble has one flown bubble. over the building we're sitting behind. Um, we got another team coming up on the finish line here. Let's see if we can see who it is. Oh, it's you the see. foul play, the peacock. Lovely. Who does have opening tail feathers and closing. It's kind of nice. a fun. And I like how their team is just all in peacock gear. <laughs> you know, everybody's just, it's, it's all kind of their own thing, but they'll have a peacock shirt <laughs> or a peacock feather print dress. So just peacock stuff. Um, and that's, uh, it's cool. It's thematic and it's accessible. Everybody was able to just go get something of their own. Um, some teams will spend a lot of time making a costume for everybody. Um, and some teams will be like, everybody show up wearing a black shirt. You know, we'll figure it out from there. It's definitely very much like a 
like a theater production. Is this one the Stoked for Glory coming in? I think. Looks like, did they, didn't they already come in? Oh, did this they one's back Stoked up? for Glory. I thought they backed up. Stoked for Glory there, uh, made out of some reclaimed redwood. And um, beautiful the, workmanship. <laughs> it's Lucas Thornton and Blake Regan. Regan. Uh, Lucas is actually a surfboard designer. Really? Yeah, wood foot surf craft. Oh, that's his um, one of his uh, one of his hustles there. He designs surfboards. I don't think he designed those up top. They're a little chunky, funky. That's one of the twins for this year, though. There's the beach fleas and Stoke for Glory. So okay. Two surfer themes, two apple themed, two bee themed, and two train themes. That's all the twinning. Ah, but <laughs> Stoke for Glory has um, has skateboarders, whereas Beach Please has uh, lifeguards in skimpy clothing. <laughs> yes, they do. Very so skimpy clothing. Very distracting. <laughs> I'm impressed because it's cold. <laughs> I mean, it's not cold, cold, but it's not like walking around in a Speedo warm here in Ferndale or anywhere. The bay is typically about 40 degrees. <laughs> They're just one of the yeah, Speedos. I was having a lot right. of fun photobombing people's pictures. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> that <was> great. <laughs> When, I remember uh, when Queen Jima ran for Queen many, many years ago. Um, her water crossing was a synchronized swimming routine, which happens in the, like in the Portuguese hall. <laughs> Bare bones. And she had a uh, lifeguards who came to save her. They were all wearing speedos. <laughs> there goes Bare Bones. Team Asgard racing. <laughs> Looking good there. There's. Andrew Goff taking pictures. He's going to come talk to us in a little bit. Give us a, an update on, hopefully, on uh, who still has their ace and who's the fastest. Of course, teams are going for the best balance of art, speed, and engineering in order to win that grand championship title. But um, the, only act, the only information we have access to <laughs> is the actual course times. But we don't get to see the scores. Um, until after the fact. But then, once the award ceremony is done and everybody's gotten their trophies um, and they post the results, the Goddess Juno actually publishes the spreadsheet. So you can go back and look. That's great. At, at all the, you know, it's just a, a matter of transparency. She wants, you know, to be, she's the goddess for a reason. She is so organized. Definitely organized and tenacious. <laughs> and sparkly. Well, and sparkly, and she does it all like, with a wonderful smile and an attitude and a genuine love for kinetics and the kinetic community. And I love how her team is very organized too. She's got a great team working with her to get everything happening. <laughs> I've noticed through the years, she just snags really like capable people to be on different parts of the race or on different teams. And she's like, you're mine. <coughs> Excuse me. For the glory. <laughs> Sorry, my I put all of my flags together that I got this year on my pendants. And what are what are some of these flags well, you have here? I've got a good here. glorious one from the general merch one. I've got the bunny from the the crazy rabbit okay. racer this year. I've got utter nonsense because that's my family. Team Goddess Racing and Early Risers, the team from Colfax High School. Oh, that one. had some big problems and tried. They built their own machine. Yeah. This year they've come multiple times, but and they have a uh, a new team this year and they just have a had a really tragic breakdown on the Samoa Bridge coming in on Eureka and their oh. machine was no longer able to go. Oh, they lost no. a tire on the uh, bridge. And it was exciting, very exciting. Yeah, <laughs> I, love, I just love Colfax High and their facilitator, Christian. Yes. And they, they've been coming for many years. And uh, it's good you mentioned that they build their team. They, they build their craft. So every single year they build a new kinetic because it's a high school class. It's their engineering class. Here we go. Yep. Oh, Caddy Wampas. Yeah, Caddy Wampas, June Moxon's team. I leave. <laughs> oh, she's so sparkly. Love. It changes colors in the sunshine. Oh, and it's that, that fabric where when the sun came out just in time. <laughs> when you push it one direction or another, it changes colors. You know, like yeah, those sequins that flip over. Everybody wants to pet the <laughs> creature. Oh, Giant claws. Cool. They're all gold nails are done. And June has such a big, um, fun pit crew and dance numbers and just so many people. She's so inclusive. Uh, she does an ace so that they can trade out pilots so as many people as possible can get a chance to be in that pilot seat. Uh, while we're here in Ferndale, I'd just like to give a quick special thanks to Melissa at the Humboldt Hometown Store. They have items from 200 plus local markets, local makers and Keith has been posted outside their business all day. So we're kind of in their way 
Um, we want to thank Melissa at Humboldt Hometown Store. Bounce comes for Glory! BFG, Bounce for Glory. Uh, this year, he is calling himself barely functioning geriatric. <laughs> His words, not mine. We're not trash talking Peter. He's trash talking himself. No, I, he, um, he's got a, got a medical theme there. <laughs> surgical gown and some surgical tubing. Is this the Jeep? Can you oh, see that one? The Kinetic Cabaret. Oh, the Kinetic oh, Cabaret. She, she's cheapy. Princess Wendy. <laughs> we love um, her. <laughs> Princess Tootsie Rolls, longtime Kinetic Racer, and she feeds people, yeah. She cooks. <laughs> she stops and she stares. She makes pizzas, uh, chicken and waffles. She was doing onion rings at the bottom of Dead Man's Drop. <laughs> um, yeah, very fun. And she just full full on meals. Like she has a deep fryer. You know, it's, like <laughs> it's not, amazing. It's not even just like I'm gonna hand you a cold sandwich. She's, she's a reusable plate, she brings them all back. It's great. Yeah. It's nice to have people nurturing. And I love it when people kind of take on that little niche. Um, like oh, like the uh, the fairy godmother. Kinetic fairy godmother. She is a, such a special, amazing person in, in the kinetic universe. I think she goes along the course and grants kinetic wishes to kids and people who need them throughout the day. She uh, definitely she added me to that uh, retinue of people that can are authorized by the kinetic fairy godmother to do so. So I uh, can also grant some kinetic wishes on the course. I've done that a little bit this weekend, but uh, but she handed that off to me. But she still is very active in that role, which is so good. I'm so glad. I hope she. She keeps doing it forever. But it she was, was on the she was on the uh, entourage of Queen Jane Doe, yes, who's International Lady of Mystery. Twentieth year of being a queen. Her twentieth queen anniversary. She's marvelous. <laughs> and this is a ten year queen anniversary for Lady Luck, who ran in twenty thirteen. Okay, in thirteen, Lady Luck won because we needed her <laughs> right then. Um, Lots of queens out on the course. And Queen Jane Doe all, and uh, Queen Dynamite helped to coordinate the Kinetic Classic this last year to bring back that kids race. Okay. Which is really special. We're looking to do that September 24th this year. Oh, it's moved to the fall. It has. It used to be on Mother's Day. It was tough for some folks to make it. Then the mothers all complained. Yes. So, now that also, I'm a mother, I totally right? appreciate that. It's I was like, oh. Moment. It's hard. I it, don't want to get up and then, like. <laughs> it was bringing the same people every year, but the other people coming in, they, they it was hard to bring that yeah. in. But, Future kinetic racers. My daughter did that six years, and then she judged it this year, and she's a racer this year. It's, it's like it works. Sometimes they progress through that, and definitely, go yeah, you for gotta, all that glory. That, like, <laughs> that, uh, that little bait, you know, you yes. hook them young, get them involved, and they make their they decorate scooters. And uh, we saw Katie had the most amazing one for her little one in a in a, in a stroller as oh, a wild we, thing. Yeah. That was the cutest ever. When my <laughs> When my son was just a few months old, the, like his his first year on the planet, we decorated his stroller like the, um, the boat <laughs> from Wild Things, from where the Wild Things are, and had him dressed like Max, and then we were dressed like Wild Things, his dad and I, <laughs> dressed like Wild Things, and it was um, so we looked like monsters, you know. And it we're out there in the kinetic classic, <laughs> so and this little this little girl comes up to me. I'm holding my baby, and I've got these big crazy teeth on, and I'm like you know hairy and big fake feet and stuff, and she comes up, she says, I thought you looked scary until I saw you holding a baby, and then I knew you were okay. <laughs> like, I, yeah, that's legit, okay, fair, fair enough. It's pretty good. And I'll I'm not likely to try and eat you up. <laughs> It'll scare my baby. I loved, uh, yes. Katie made that kinetic classic. You made that really spectacular. That was, oh, I, good. I, I've been so happy to be able to help keep it popping along <laughs> a couple of times. Here come the apple peddlers. Yeah, Queen um, Queen Shay revitalized that, uh, doing it here in Ferndale. And I, I think that's probably my um, biggest gaffe as a nonprofit administrator is I tried to have the classic in Ferndale one year on Mother's Day, and I got a permit to close the street. Um, but there was only like 10 participants. So basically, I closed down two <laughs> blocks of Ferndale's Main Street on Mother's Day, including a couple of restaurants, oh, no. so that 10 kids could ride their bike down the street, and I guess that was not a popular decision. Oh, no. So then we moved it to Eureka. It was in um, the Seiko Amphitheater, which is right next to Halverson Park, which is where the 
big kid race finish line is on day one. I was there for a little bit and then went to Arcata Plaza. We did last year to Arcata. The idea was maybe we could go to the different sites of yeah. the race, but um, that this year it'll probably be in Halverson Park again, but they're building a playground there. I know. So it'll be, it'll, it'll happen this year, but that'll probably be it for that location. <laughs> I wonder, so. the designs for the playground are actually open for public comment yeah, right now. Oh, so here come the exciting. apple peddlers. Apple peddlers. Hello. Uh, Jen Weiss and Billy Penix. They are operating, they build uh, in a really cool place called Mendenhall Studios in Eureka, which is um, an awesome uh, little collection of shops with a courtyard in the middle of it, a bunch of artists, a bunch of kinetic teams in there. The Apple Peddlers are there. Um, the Marvel Universe is there. Their uh, monsters exist. And Team that Half team. Fast, right? And Team yeah. Half Fast, the Knights Who Say B. They're all operating out of Mendenhall Studios. So if you're in Eureka during Arts Alive, that's a good place to stop by. Uh, early in kinetic season, you can probably see their stuff in progress. And also it's a great place to just hear some music and support local artists. And if you don't go to Arts Alive, what's wrong with you? Get out to Arts Alive. <laughs> oh, yay. Here's Beach, Beach please. please. The surfers, the surfers. Head pilot there is uh, Queen So Hot She Burns, LaRue Tabega. It is a Rutabaga Queen Sahachi. She's an international soap star. Last Sahachi year, is. this is the one that uh, Adam raced on last year, the one that got the golden flipper in the Eel River. Oh, nice. These guys had a bit of a problem yesterday off the plaza, but they are still rolling. They did all the parts. That's good, that's glorious. You know, sometimes yeah. breaking down and then persevering is just even more glorious <laughs> than not having any problems at all. Absolutely. Our good friend Lee Lazon is there who helps make 3D printed treasures for, this, for the trophies I love to make. <laughs> so. Nice. Uh, so, yeah, tell us a little bit about the trophies. How, oh, the how trophies. do we get all the trophies for Kinetics? Oh, it's artists create the trophies. Other uh, Kinetic artists create them. There are some that are, are gigantic, some that are lighter weight. They're all just handmade creations for, for the... Uh, for the, for the winners of the different categories. And I, just, I was so honored to be able to step in and make the trophy for the spectator's choice. And then this year also doing the one for the uh, for the champions of tomorrow. And it's just such an honor to be able to be in there making those. Many of them are welded or bigger. I'm more of a glue gun artist myself. So <laughs> yeah. I'm still stepping it up to make it cool. <laughs> At one time, I, I was telling them this, one time I won um, best bribe and the judge for best bribe just took my bribe and spray painted it gold and gave it back. <laughs> wow. Fantastic. Yeah. Grateful Squid. Yeah. You think here's Grateful that. Squid. Cool. There's Grateful Squid coming in with their entourage, their fantastic squid hats. Uh, I want to give a quick shout out to 101 Netlink. Thank you, 101 Netlink, for providing us the internet uh, here in Ferndale so that we can connect to the world and bring this glory to you. Thank you, 101 Netlink. And of course, thanks to Kinetic Universe, the nonprofit that is running the Kinetic Grand Championship. Without their tireless work all throughout the year, it is entirely volunteer run. Um, without them doing all of this work, making this glory happen, I just, it just wouldn't, uh, I would say it wouldn't happen. It might happen, but it wouldn't be insured or <laughs> permitted or that safe. That is important. Very it wouldn't important. be anywhere for people to park. <laughs> all uh, those things are very important. Yeah. Oh, there's the bees. Plan, Plan B. B. Nice flower hats on those, y'all. I like them. They are so lovely and happy all the time in the, on the race. We love a lot, of, a lot of people excited about them and the Spectator's Choice booty. <laughs> those, those bees are their flotation, aren't they? Yes. Are they pontoons? Bees. Are they rigid? I can't. Are they barrels? I haven't looked at it. I'm starting to know as I'm noticing the ones in the sculpture my husband and daughter are racing, I've started to notice more. Oh, you now you're starting to <laughs> I'm just to starting to tune into some of those languages. Get into the logistics <laughs> yes. of it. You're like, oh yeah, look, they use pontoons, like, but they use rigid them. barrels, but they use foam. Yes. <laughs> uh, and right and so the subtle changes in the rules can change can bring about changes in strategy. Mm -hmm. um, here's barely functional, <laughs> barely functioning They're as usual. Using barrels. <laughs> This is their first year. So I asked them, why brew crew? Uh, and they said that they were racing using these barrels. These are those pickle barrels you can get at a local hardware store. Um, you know, so they're food grade plastic. 
um, and they're inexpensive. People use them a lot for water storage around here. Um, but they were using those as flotation, and they didn't have their machine name on, and so people kept calling them the Brew Crew. <laughs> so they just picked it up. They thought they were people thought they were kegs. They're actually um, garlic barrel. <laughs> they're, they, they're, they have got garlic or tamponade or something in them. That's fun. <laughs> so I, I bought one of those and took it camping one time. And he opened it. I was like, mm, my water smells like garlic. <laughs> That 30 gallons of garlic water. The mosquitoes aren't going to bug me. And my favorite, Electric Mayhem. Dr. <laughs> Teeth is my is my hero. And uh, the Electric Mayhem looking so colorful and so bright. And I just love the, all those masks. Look how much work to make all those beautiful articulated Muppet masks. We've got Lush Newton on there and Malia, uh, the, the head artist on this one. Um, and James Hildebrand is in there on the team too. A lot of, lot of creative, amazing people that make big, big, cool art. <laughs> Very cool. I thought a great crew to hang out with. I could get at their camp a little bit last night. Who's this? I can't see the top this of that the one. Apple, uh, the uh, Johnny Appleseed. Oh, Joni. Joni Appleseed. Joni Sorry, Appleseed. Joni Appleseed. The other apple themed. <laughs> yes. They have these little giant apples in the back for their pageantry. They got the crowd involved with a big uh, apple toss. <laughs> it was great. They're tossing the bags. Are they like bean bags? They're soft. Like I wonder if they help them float. I'm not sure. They I didn't get to catch one. <laughs> but they were squishy. People were having fun tossing them around. So we got Joni Appleseed and the Apple Peddlers. Mm-hmm. Appling it up. <laughs> we have two Shania trains. Have we seen either of them? Or we they, no. they passed by a little while ago. I saw one of their pit crew in the leopard print top hats. <laughs> the wambulance. Here comes the wambulance. That's that um the Swing Kids team, yes. named so because they all are um, swing dancers. They all dance together. Dance this the is the Redwood Troop. Rocks Collective in Arcata. Indeed. Rockin' Monday Night Swing for more than, I think, two decades or so. Wow. <laughs> Monday nights are swing nights. <laughs> that uh, patient of theirs is being very patient. Yeah. It's just taking forever to get wherever they're taking them. They had him on one of the pontoons in the water. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they gave him a name and a backstory. I think he was distracted by a bunch of nude bicyclists. Bicyclists. They haven't crossed the finish line yet. I think they're going to stop and do a. I think they're going to do a oh, dance do number. <laughs> of yeah, course they are. Soaking it up. I think that they deliberately hung back from the crowd. Are they? Are they dancing to what the band is playing? I don't know. They might have their own number. It'd be funny if they they, they coordinated have, they have with alive. the lumberjacks. Oh, staying alive. Because, yeah, do you know alive. why they're doing staying I alive? I do. Because Tom Boswell right there had a heart attack in February. And the, the, Chris from Sparky was there and knew just noticed something was happening. And uh, because of kinetics, it saved his life because he went to the hospital with was in surgery very soon after. Oh, wow. Had a flatlining moment for a second, got defibrillated, and he made a dance based on that and connected his whole... He, can't, he couldn't race this year because he couldn't get that heart rate up so much, but he was mm. definitely able to dance and to help get the machine going. He helped with Adam's team getting the utter nonsense, so he helped with multiple teams this year getting things going and rehabbing that machine. And it just speaks to, speaks to how uh, supportive this community it's is. Great. That they are. You know, people will go and work on it. It's not a, oh, you know, my team's going to win and your team and them sabotage or not going to help you. Like people are there are welding on and, and loaning art supplies and, and just helping each other out with advice. And, um, but I thought that it was staying alive because they say when you're doing uh, CPR, yes. that, that is the perfect. That, that amount of beats per minute is the perfect speed at which to do CPR compressions. So, so you hear um, EMTs doing that even. They'll be doing compressions and hearing it going, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I think they're being told they don't get to do the dance because other teams are coming. <laughs> right oh, up. here's oh. Queen Robotica in Happy Birthday, the, uh, the little yikes, the cozy coop pinata. Um, Dancing, on, <laughs> dancing across the finish line. Uh, of course, the Queen's um, robots drive <laughs> exploded into a million pieces on the plaza before the race even started. Um, but they have yeah. been <laughs> persevering, dutifully hauling this artwork <laughs> all along. Oh no, now it's a pinata. Oh no. Oh dear. It's a <laughs> 
<laughs> the royal paint it. is attacking it. Oh, the it's all going to be, oh, oh they're going to destroy, destroy it. Sculpture. Oh, they're taking it out. Oh, Queen dear. Monica's there. They're getting, there. They're getting folks involved in it. Can rip it up. <laughs> Tanya says, what do you do with pinatas? They get excited. They want to rip things Tear them apart and, and, and get the candy, the gooey candy center I wonder if there will be candy inside. Oh, look, they're bringing oh, all the kids they over candy. to do it. They have bags of candy inside the machine to give the kids. <laughs> It's like, they're just breaking out of the children. Is that's, there candy? <laughs> that's fantastic. Yay. Now, now we can cross the finish line. Okay. Very Poetic. nice. Very glorious. He goes for the poetry. <laughs> that's, uh, that's pageantry right there. Yes. <laughs> that's kinetic thrills. Well, okay, now, now Queen Robotica has clearly won the finish line. <laughs> that was wonderful. So we're yeah. doing it like, hey. That must be all of it. That was great. Ah, okay. <laughs> Who else do we have coming in here? So many teams, so much glory. I, I think I started really fully appreciating that finish line crossing more when, when I went to Crab Park for the first time and saw the, the draggle pulling themselves together to really rock that final part of the journey. It's pretty yeah. amazing. <laughs> Even with the Eel River crossing, the third day is probably the easiest day. Because uh, day two, uh, day one is just dead man's drop is just a whole other level of crazy. Cutlass. And yeah, there we go, Cutlass. And day two, you have not only the water crossing, but also Table Bluff to go over. And then you cannot underestimate uh, Cannibal Island Road. Just that last 5.1 miles to the finish line. Once you turn um, in the town of Lolita, once you turn, you come down Table Bluff, you turn right, and you head out Cannibal Island Road to Crab Park, and it's 5.1 miles into a headwind. There's no glory, because there's no spectators out there, because it's a private road. It's the, that's for me, is the most brutal part of the race. Um, and here we have Fun oh, Guy. Rat Rod. Stuck together with Band-Aids and duct <laughs> yes. tape and chewing gum. Right now, Glory. For the finish line. <laughs> they did make it into Crab Park last night, and it does look like they have made it to the finish line under their own power, which leaves them eligible for awards in art and pageantry. Uh, you can't win an engineering award without getting an ace, of course, but you can, and you can't win the grand champion title unless you uh, get an ace also. Um, and it doesn't hurt to have an engineering award if you're going for grand champ. Yes. Interestingly, though, um, Hobart laid out a rule, the glorious founder of Kinetic Sculpture Racing, that um, the grand champion can only win, can't win any other major award. Uh -huh. So if you are grand champion, you don't get an art or speed or engineering award. Even if you won one, even if you won first place in art, speed, and engineering, you would get grand champ, but not get those other three awards mm. so that more major awards can go to more racers. That's great. Uh, it's interesting. interesting yeah. um, and you know, and it's good to spread the glory around for sure. It's also like you you're in the award ceremony, and then you know you've got a you know you've got an ace. You know you've got great art. You know you made good time, and you're just not getting any awards. It's like why am I not getting any awards? And then people uh, start wondering. They're like, is it me? Mm. Are we the grand champs? And you start thinking like, okay, if I don't get a speed, if we don't get a speed award, we're definitely the champions. And then you know, people are like, doing all this math, you know, like, like second guessing the goddess. <laughs> Uh, we're not going to get to find out uh, who the winners are, who's getting all these amazing awards, um, because we're going to uh, end our broadcast once everybody crosses the finish line. But you can find out by going to KineticGrandChampionship.com. They'll put stuff up there. The Loco is going to have the, the results up there. So you can definitely find it, uh, find it around. Here comes Monsters, Monsters. Exist. The, the, the Z at the end, Monsters. <laughs> the team from Marvel Universe. These are... Um, Marble enthusiasts, they're glass blowers. Um, so they you know, do a combination of glass blowing and kinetic building over there at Mendenhall Studios. Pretty great combination. <laughs> yeah, they have great bribes. Yes, they do. <laughs> very, very cool. Marble, glass, and little pendant. I like that their machine is like, it's a marble head. That's, that's their guy's marble head. Uh, and I think Topher Reynolds, one of the glass artists on this team, will make little marble head marbles, like actual marbles out of glass, but with that dude in it. Some of 
the artists that do the kinetic sculptures are, are artists, if that's what they do for a living. Uh, and But most people, I think a lot of folks, uh, have some other career. Yeah. Some whole other thing that they do. Sometimes it ties in, though. Yeah. <laughs> Our utter nonsense. He's a goat. He actually works with goats in the dairy for Cypress Grove. So. Okay, so <laughs> he's surrounded by goats all the time. It's thematic. They're inspiring him. I like to tell people if you've ever met Fun Guy, he's a, he's a boisterous and interesting individual. Yes, he is. I've actually known him before Kinetic as I, he used to work at the Kinko's in Arcata. Uh huh. And we went way back with flyering. And then before that, he was a hot dog one time outside on Broadway. And I remember waving to <laughs> him. He was a hot dog. Yeah. And you know what he does now? <laughs> insurance. He's an my insurance agent. <laughs> I, 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 he was in my insurance agent for a long time in the dance studio. <laughs> oh, here comes, uh, here comes <laughs> Team Half Fast. The nice with... who say B. <laughs> B. They've said B a lot this weekend. Oh, that's what they do. <laughs> They've been giving out shrubberies. They've been yelling at the uh, <laughs> lousy English knigots. <laughs> and they have fire, so definitely a favorite amongst many of the Spectator's Choice voters. Because fire. I was talking with one of the artists about their wings there. Mm -hmm. I was appreciating the fact that their wings are just this beautiful framework. It looks so delicate, but they're very sturdy. Fireproof. Um, <laughs> And, I, and he said that they used to have covering on them, but they kept burning it. <laughs> yes. It's like, he used to have this great shiny fabric, and then we kept burning holes in that. it. Someone asked about that at, um, at Halverson Park, why they didn't have, I figured it was probably because they also have fire. I, I, yeah, I thought it was a style choice. <laughs> but no, it's just hard to find non-flammable fabric, apparently, <laughs> okay. to make your wings out of. Uh, but they've been um, both requesting and setting out shrubberies. Yes, I'm shrubbery. so glad I have a tiny shrubbery from them. Oh yeah, look, me too. Shrubbery. I have a tiny shrubbery. Oh, different kinds of shrubbery. <laughs> yeah. They've been scouring thrift stores for months to get itty bitty shrubberies. <laughs> so great. They also had a fundraiser. It was a miniature um, Olympics uh, recently. They had tiny, tiny Jenga, tiny, tiny. It was Team 112, the Lot Lizards. They had their ace coming out of the water or heading into the water yesterday. Yeah. Looking forward to finding out who's got an ace left. Of course, because only folks who managed to have an ace are going to be eligible for that grand championship. Uh, we started out with 44 teams, 18 of them attempting to ace. And by the end of day one, only 10 ace teams were left. So that's only a quarter of the teams eligible for the grand champ prize, the big prize. And um, which, of course, the prize is uh, glory. Glory, so much glory. Yeah, there's no, <laughs> there's no like trip to Europe or, or cash on the line. But they get to host the sculpture, the giant trophy oh, sculpture. Yeah. The, the grand championship sculpture, the grand championship trophy is a perpetual trophy. Uh, which actually started because one year Hobart was making the Grand Champion trophy and didn't get it done in time. So he handed the Grand Champ the pile of pieces. I was like, here, put it together. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> There's a glorious gaggle. So did you ever see the documentary where the, uh, some folks were trying to teach a flock of rehabilitating beasts to fly and to migrate? <laughs> So they built an ultralight that looked like a goose in order to show these geese the migration, like how to migrate. And this, this is what this reminds me of. The big goose and all the little geese just... Uh, Learning how to migrate to Ferndale. <laughs> <laughs> Follow me, kids. I like how the wings move up and down and how they have a really great horn that sounds like a goose honking. And then everybody on the team has a horn, too. Yeah, lots of uh, honking. <laughs> lots of honking. And what an easy, fun way to just tie something super easy out of it. So just, there's horns, you know, but, it, but it's uh, thematic. It's appropriate. <laughs> honk, honk. <laughs> uh, and then they've all got those little flags on there with different goose puns. <laughs> I don't think I've read all of them, but there's some really cute I'm ones. trying to think of one. <laughs> There's some things about hissing. There's are pretty good. They were throwing out goose poop. I mean, not really goose poop, but uh, like fake goose poop into the crowd, which is funny because they start throwing stuff and people are like, yay, they're going to catch it. It's just like, like it oh. says goose poop. I'm like, oh, great. That's lovely. I got the uh, spawn of the dead here. Spawn of the dead. A little gruesome, you know, beauty of the circle of life kind of thing here. I love how they have some kids on their team as peons and they were all they're all zombieized in their makeup, but the Aww. kids were so happy and perky and little happy right. perky zombies. <laughs> they're just, perky like, zombies. They just 
<laughs> they didn't fake character all the way. That's okay. They were they were great. That's all right. <laughs> they were happy. <laughs> I see the reds on their wheels are green. <laughs> like reds, like the like um like eggs, like oh, row. Oh yes. I assume that's what that was. They look, it looks like row in the wheels, but it's green, like it's rotten. <laughs> yeah, they had that bribe that was little pancakes that were shaped like fish that had Nutella inside, and they looked like rotten fish, but they were so tasty. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was impressed. <laughs> it's a Japanese treat like that, a little custard fish they do for different festivals. Maybe that's what they were modeling it after. It's this sushi blue one. Thing. Oh, yeah, no. they probably know. <laughs> it's pretty fun. <laughs> Sushi so much glory. <laughs> it's nice to have a restaurant sponsor. Yes. To say. Uh, although, you know, it, it needs to be a restaurant that uh, you like. Yeah. <laughs> One time my team was sponsored by the Philly Cheesesteak <laughs> folks, and I was a vegetarian at the time, um, which is fine. They have options. But my, my co-pilot went and got the team um, sponsorship all at one time. So there's like three of us working in the garage on this and they decided they wanted to give us our sponsorship in food. And they said, well, come on, just come pick it up whenever you want. And so my team engineer goes and picks up the donation. One random Sunday, we're all working and he goes and picks up like 25 Philly cheesesteak sandwiches. There's three of us working in there like, why? <laughs> what are you gonna do with this? I think he they just could be friends. <laughs> right. I think he lived on it for a week is what That's happened. <laughs> Engineers are weird people. <laughs> a lot of cheesesteaks. <laughs> he just really liked his cheesesteaks. Do we have somebody here? Well the the um, Kinetic Madness band out there hyping up the crowd. Let's Getting see. folks. I don't Shania know Train, if there's... We uh, haven't seen Shania Train come through. Have we, or did we see... I don't think so. I saw some of their pit crew, but I don't know if we saw mm -hmm. the machine itself. There's a lot going on. Things are happening, happening fast here. So usually I'd be out there twirling around in the street with the band. Like that person. It's fun being that, yes, I'd usually be doing that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's sad not being on the finish line, but That's it's also okay. really nice to be able to bring this glory to everyone. I've been hearing uh, folks eat on the race and getting in touch with me online about um, you know how grateful they are that we are able to put kinetics out over the air so yes. folks can see it elsewhere. Um, plenty of people who grew up in Humboldt or from here who missed the race and are just so happy to be able to tune in. Uh, and we're so happy that you're here. One couple that I talked to at Halverson had come to the race 40 years. Wow. And they were so delighted that they had this live stream because their, um, their child who grew up here is now in North Carolina. I got to see and love it. This is how I explain to people in Texas. Oh, there's Shania. Oh, there's Shania Train. One and two. <laughs> One and two. Okay, so they are on the... I asked them if they were on the same team and they said no. They had different numbers, but they're all one big party. They had quite a dance party at Halverson Park. Nice. <laughs> nice. Okay, so they're so they're like they are two separate registered group. One group. <laughs> yes. One family. <laughs> they are coordinated. One I bunch had, of friends. I lost some storage base and gave away a lot of fabric this year, and some of the fabric went to Shania Train, the animal print velvet for my mom's business. Nice. And then a lot of uh, silk to the Kinetic Mayhem. They oh. made a lot of ribbon wands. It's yeah. pretty nice thing. Things awesome. be re-loved in the art world. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but a lot of animal print went into Shania Train. No kidding. <laughs> That's the most animal print I have seen in one place since a, I attended a hairdresser's convention in 1982. <laughs> <laughs> there is some fabulousness out there on the streets of Ferndale today. That's for sure. And everybody's going to uh, go and just uh, ice their knees, I'm guessing. <laughs> this is what I would be doing, for sure. Uh, you know, it takes a it takes a big effort to to put this on. Um, 17 div the Kinetic Grand Championship. It's three days, over 50 miles of land, sand, water, and mud. But that's 17 locations. That's amazing. Five <laughs> different municipalities. It actually crosses seven or eight towns. But they engage with five different municipalities. All these permitting bodies. It's absolutely a crazy logistical feat that just is amazing. 
And uh, this little broadcast we're doing here is its own logistical feat, trying to figure out where to put things so that we can get the right signals out, uh, getting the stages up. I want to thank the party place, actually, for um, our stages so that we can have our cameras elevated a little bit over the heads of the crowd and give some better views here of the glory. We've got another team coming in. It's STEM, the STEM, um, the what? They are doing, oh dear, well, I made the wrong word wrong, the STEMinists, there we go. The STEMinists, oh, Raspberry Fembot. Yes, they have, they have wonderful pageantry with all these different uh, featured female science leaders, leaders in, in um, art and government. And nice. They have a lot of messaging behind their The STEMinists, oh, I see, so STEM, STEM, like science, technology, engineering, yes, math. Yes, they have a whole song STEM about STEM. STEM. Nice. We wove it together nicely in a beautifully written song. <laughs> so I like to hang out next to pageantry. I get a lot of the stories of, <laughs> Definitely. of the backstories of the work. <laughs> uh, you can tell sometimes the teams that do more traveling because in other races you're required to have a song. Mm. In the Corvallis race, you have to have a team song. Oh. Uh, and that's part of um, your entry into the race. You got to get up and sing your team song in front of everybody. Um, and they're, they're tied in with the Da Vinci Days, the festival there celebrating Da Vinci. And you have to include the words Da Vinci and Corvallis in your song. In your song? That's great. And then, uh, There's a Kinetic Madness fan posing for a picture, I think, for the glory. Three, two, one. <laughs> uh, they come out there on the plaza. They, um, on day two, they'll be on the Eureka waterfront. And on day three, they come out and do the finish line here and keep the crowd moving, keep things going. It's very festive, very exciting. And I think for them, this is their, uh, their little family reunion with their marching band friends that they'll get back together. Um, like I said, a lot of alumni in the band and they'll come back together once a year to do this or other kinetic events. For the glory, so much glory. <laughs> Everybody has all these little these little niches. We were talking yesterday about how the ground pounders, you know, that's their, or the medics, that that's their, their chosen way to support kinetics and that they do it every year yeah. and there's this, um, this community, this little group of friends, they've got strategies, they've got, they're so elaborate and so much details in each one of these little so silos. Tiny. Um, and they're all doing their part. And the, the, the traffic control folks, they know their job. The, the goddess Geno, like we were saying, uh, snagging all the super capable people <laughs> yes. uh, whenever they're not doing something else specifically. <laughs> She'll be like, you're with me now. Um, and then you can't get off team goddess, because why would you want to? But everybody has their own little section that they, like you and the, the Kinetic Fairy Collective, and you've been doing Spectator's Choice, is that right? That's right? Yes, for several years. I was working with uh, Tammy from Asgard Racing, who works with pageantry uh, for a few years on the polstering little group, and then she invited me to come and be that head polstering person, help coordinate polsters, which is great because we really try to get a lot of people in different places. Mm -hmm. So in the water day, we have people at the water entry along the boardwalk and at the exit. We have people at your Natural Foods in the water often. We've had people on kayaks out there. <laughs> Nice. the water people, not this year, but usually. The best and way to watch kinetics on the around. water. Yeah, just really to try to get out to where the people are. They're even polstering today here in Ferndale. Oh, yeah? And just to ask people what their story is, what they love to see, and um, and get that vote in there for people's choice. So what, what do people like? What, what are really popular oh, things? Oh, it depends on who you're asking. I love, some really are excited about engineering. Some are just there to support their friend or family member who told them to vote for them. And they're they don't want to <laughs> Come go on, wrong. vote for me. There you go. <laughs> I vote for who my wife votes for. That sort of sometimes. Um, but it's fun when you have a group of people and everyone's voting for a different team and they all have a different reason and they all are excited about something different. I talk to kids, little tiny people who really know they love that pink bunny. <laughs> they love that one with the fire. They love the, the bee. And we have to talk about which one with the bees because there's multiple. Because there's several. <laughs> Bees. But it's great to have those conversations. Oh, swing kids are doing their dance now. Now they have a few minutes. <laughs> and then somebody, some people just pick it for the name. Some pick the name. Like they, they, can I just pick a name? Or someone look and see on, I try to remind them on my clipboard isn't representative of all the clipboards coming together, but they'll look and see who doesn't have any votes yet, and they'll vote for them, which I love. Okay. Yeah. Not sure if we have all the teams crossing the finish line yet. We're going to check on that. Uh, meanwhile, I want to say a big thank you to my co-hosts. Of course, uh, Shoshana here today. But yesterday, we did have Mayor 
Kim Bergell from uh, the mayor of Eureka, who is also an East Kinetic pilot. And then on day one, we had Jackie Danano from Playhouse Arts up there in Arcata. So really like a, a powerhouse crew, I think. Uh, some, some movers and shakers in the county here <laughs> in my, my counter chair. There's five uh, more machines to come in. Yeah, we got five more that are making their way through. We're going to see uh, see who they are. Thank you I'm, so much for having me come and join you. It's been so wonderful to be a part of this year's kinetics. And <laughs> oh, good. Good. I felt bad when we had to drag you away from the actual oh, finish line. Okay. I'm like, Shoshana just wants to twirl. She, if, you, if she can't go twirl at the finish line, then... You know. <laughs> it feels a little strange. I twirled from that Philo earlier. We, we always twirl at events together. Get a, get a picture of it. Here we get some good twirling. <laughs> Matt Philo is a photographer, so yes. of course he likes anything, anything twirling and pretty and sparkly. Definitely. That's all about it. I remember um, we had the Rutabaga Ball in Redwood Rocks one year, and you were helping out with the venue there. And uh, I said, you know, I asked that you should come to the ball. And you asked, um, is it okay if I wear a ball gown? <laughs> we have to check sometimes. I was like, Shoshana, I insist that you wear a ball gown. <laughs> the sparklier, <laughs> the better. Whenever possible. I've, I've tried to wear a different outfit in every part of the race this weekend. So. Mm -hmm got the, a lot of outfits like that. Uh, so at the start line, I was wearing a sequin dress and Jackie Danano was wearing overalls and we came <laughs> upon Shoshana looking like she usually does. <laughs> Big bullet gowns. <laughs> Rutabaga Princess Sparkle Lumina, that's her title. Uh, and I said, well, okay, at the finish line, I'll put on my overalls <laughs> and then we can <laughs> be a nice contrast oh, there. That's right. Full circle. <laughs> exactly. For my kinetic, uh, kinetic duds here. This is actually just my work uniform. I just wear this to work. <laughs> I love how there are all layers of dressing up in the <laughs> race and people are like at the top level of fancy sparkle and just have the entire the, the whole range of, of uh, approaches to their, their kinetic vibe and persona and what they want to bring to it. Oh yeah, definitely. It's, it's how they show up as part of the art. <laughs> like it's great. For sure. And then, and then, oh, here we go. The pirate has arrived. Hooray. Yeah, there's something very kinetic about, um, you know, a ball gown stained with axle grease. Yes, it works. These uh, are working ball gowns, great for adventures. <laughs> there was a, an award in Arcata, and I'm wondering who got it, but I was told that at the at the start line, the mayor of Arcata was going to give an award called the Immaculate Contraption. Yes, it was Trash Lantis. It was Trash Lantis? Yes, they picked Trash Lantis, I think a lot because the message, I think it was that they loved it in the message, too. Okay. But I, I think originally it was the idea that it might not Make it, right? <laughs> 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 is that, is that, uh, the Sailor Moon Shiners? The Sailor Moon Shiners. <laughs> They've also been a character and dressed up in all sorts of fun ways. <laughs> the Moonshine and Sailor Moon combo. Good juxtaposition. And, <laughs> and they got a cute dog, dog in there. <laughs> we love dogs. <laughs> the Sailor and the Sailor Moon Shiners. And all the kinetic teams. I love uh, I love a thematic pit crew. Yes. You know, having it having it match your machine is one thing. Having it be like, narratively go with the machine. <laughs> Some of them are deep stories. <laughs> yes, yes. There's lore. Backstories. There's lore layers. like the trash eating. Or, or multi-year lore, like that one where they just build some one year and another, and like live wrong. They do have live wronger this year, and they how do they? How do, they do more? And they've been they, living really wrong. <laughs> living really some wrong. Some very <laughs> bad choice. Poor decision making <laughs> on their part. <laughs> but it's just great to see. That. I love those because some totally change it up every year, but but some of them have a have a, a thread. <laughs> That's definitely got a thing. <laughs> Yeah, like we, um, when we did the Heroes of Gloriopolis, we were all heroes. We made our own superheroes. And then the pit crew was made up of, um, our pit captain was the evil Dr. Brussels Sprouts. Oh. Uh, and the pit crew was all just henchmen. That's great. We just had them dressing like in stripes with your masks helpers on. helpers were your enemies? Uh, That's yeah, great. So, they, so they were chasing us the whole time, right? Awesome. Because your pit crew has to follow you through the whole race. So we're like, well, it'd be funny because they're chasing us. We're, we're, we're running from them. Kind of Peddling like the that, city away the from them. Like the apple peddlers have those yellow jackets that were circling them. But yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's super kind of cute. <laughs> yellow jackets following the apples like that. <laughs> um, I love it. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Brussels Sprouts actually, uh, for his bribe, he wanted to do something really evil. So he took Brussels Sprouts and put them onto a, a, a stick like a cake pop. 
and then put them into candy and made candy. Which you can do, it's this thing you can do, but not the way he did it. He just took it and dunked them in actual molten sugar, which turned the Brussels sprouts black. Oh no! So they were edible, but they looked horrible. And so he'd give, he'd be like, oh, I have a lollipop for you. And he'd give people a lollipop, it'd be this lump of sugar with a black Brussels sprout in the middle. And it tasted like Brussels sprouts. It was like sugar and Brussels, it was really horrible. That's fabulous. He'd be like, would you like a lollipop? And the kids would be like, yeah. And he'd give it to me. they'd be like, oh, and he'd be like, ha, 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 ha. Evil laugh, like, okay. That's great. And that's how you win best pick, Chris. <laughs> Aw. <laughs> it's an all, good boys, good dogs. It's an all family, family friendly event here in Ferndale. <laughs> Uh, kinetics is, I think, you know, everybody has a kinetic story. Everybody loves to bring their, their families and friends out. Um, and I just love that it's just so inclusive. There's ways you can see the race, um, you know, if you're, if you're tired and you've got a stroller. And there's ways to see the race if you're a super athletic adventurer who's ready to hike up a sand dune or, or kayak along the river. Um, but everybody can come out and see it in their own way. And uh, now, thanks to Keat TV and Kinetic Universe, we are able to uh, bring a little bit of the glory to you, even when you can't get out there on, per on in person. Although I have been hearing from a lot of the racers that they've been watching it um, when they go home. <laughs> or the <laughs> different crews. Sometimes they sometimes they go home during the race. <laughs> and sometimes if they aren't, you know, welding or fixing something until the wee hours of the morning. Um, but being able to go back because when you're racing, you only ever get to see the machines that are near you. You only yeah. ever get to see the, the teams that are the same speed as you. Yes. And so being able to go after the fact and go watch, you're like, oh, I didn't get to see. I totally missed Sparky this year. Like, having there, a there. great view of all the water entries, being able to see everybody going in. That's so great. <laughs> that was really good. And get extra information about what's going on in the bigger picture. <laughs> yeah, and they got um, some drone footage of the plaza. Oh. Did you see that? No, I And from Dead Man's. That's, that's great. So if you missed that, you can go back, rewind that, I and watch will it. I'm watching that too. That's it'll be the top of this broadcast. And all this is going out. We're going live on uh, Channel 13 on our local PBS station, on your local PBS station. Um, but this is also going out on their YouTube channel. So if you didn't know that PTV has a YouTube channel, we do, and it's great, if I do say so myself. Got lots of great local programming there. Um, you know, it's your public media. I want to show off uh, Humboldt County and all the great stuff that Humboldt County has to offer, whether it's our organizations or our art scene or our natural beauty. There's so much cool stuff going on here, and PTV is starting to really like, show it off. It's great. And, that, and it also means that we get to be here at the finish line of the Connecticut Grand Championship. <laughs> So much glory. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a, a favorite team this year? It's kind of besides tough, your team. Your, I know <laughs> your your family God. is on a team. Besides utterly I, utter nonsense. You know, I definitely I I have a hard time voting. I'm one of those people that really has a hard time picking because there's so many stories and so many reasons and so much. If I'm voting for art, if I'm voting for the cool, you know, so many things. Electric Mayhem, though, has been pretty fun to watch. Yeah. And Spawn of the Dead. I think for those, for me, those two have been... Electric Mayhem and Spawn, and Spawn of, of the, the Dead. Dead. Well, Electric <laughs> Mayhem is my favorite. <laughs> yeah. So I know, i still got plenty of reasons for that. Uh, what do you like about Spawn of the Dead? I love the fish. I love the art's completely different this year. That's yeah. fun. And I, I love their bribe. They bribe me well. Both those teeth bribe me very well, too. I, oh. I, I got a cute little fishy sandwich with Nutella inside, and that was exciting. All right, the and I got a ribbon wand to, to wield about in a glow-in-the-dark bag from Ma'am. Nice. <laughs> kind of exciting. <laughs> Wristbands. Was, uh, oh, I just love Muppets. I, I used yes, to Muppets. live. I used to live next to this video store that had one of those five five movies for five days for five dollars. Oh, too, and they had the entire Muppet Show collection yes. Yes. on VHS. And I would go and rent like all like five of them in a row and be watching it. And I lived in this. Um, I should tell stories like this on TV. But I lived in this. I lived in this punk, punk rock. Um, heavy metal venue warehouse thing, you know, <laughs> as, as you do in your early 20s. And um, we clean on a schedule. The person who was cleaning would put on the music. And so they're all listening to like punk and metal and like all these great underground like local bands and stuff. And then it'd be my turn and I'd go put on the Muppet album. <laughs> 
It'd be like, all right, and I'd hit play, and it's like, it's not easy being green. <laughs> and all these punk kids are like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, sweep, I'm gonna put on rubber ducky. <laughs> See, I love having kids. Like, my daughters are 16 and 13 now, and uh -huh. it's been so fun to have to inundate them with all the favorite things from our 80s childhood. We've got all the Legos, we've got the Muppets, we've got all the Sesame Street from the 80s, like the oh, beauty nice. of Fraggle Rock and all the, oh, Fraggle you know, Rock. All the things that That's we thing. loved. <laughs> so what's going on at the finish line there? And we got a couple more teams that haven't made it yet. Oh. Uh, so the teams did, like I said, they didn't cross the Eel River today. Ordinarily they would. They'd go down the Warswick Bar on that um, route that was flagged out to avoid the snowy plover. And then they cross under Fernbridge and then come out on the other side where there's currently a bunch of trees blocking their way. So they're not doing that. But they did go over Fernbridge. Um, beautiful, beautiful old bridge. And they have traffic control there uh, bringing the teams across with uh, cars and a, cars having a, like a pilot car that goes through so the, the teams can move freely. But that means that they are spread out at a sort of natural uh, dispersal coming out of Crab Park. And they, they've spread out over the, the overland route getting here. So the current teams that are going slow are definitely the slowest teams right now. So we're, uh, we're kind of tucked away here uh, in Ferndale, um, where we, it's logistics, there's like a van, it's, getting the broadcast out has been a whole thing, and I'm just really happy that it's happening. It's taken yeah. so many different folks to, uh, to be um, very accommodating and generous, including the Ferndale Meat Company, who's letting us use their roof. Um, Ferndale Meat Company. Thank you, Ferndale Meat Company. Uh, thank you, 101 Netlink, who is connecting us to you, um, who's we're connecting to the roof, connecting to <laughs> us, going up to the, the big magical dish on the, on the hill that actually shoots TV out into the world. Um, <laughs> uh, thank you to the, oh, what's it called? I lost it, the Humboldt, the store that we're parked in front of that we're blocking. <laughs> That is so accommodating. There we go. Humboldt Hometown Store. Uh, Melissa at the Humboldt Hometown Store. Uh, Kinetic Universe, the nonprofit that runs the Kinetic Grand Championship. The city of Arcata, the, the jam, and the, the other folks in Arcata, the garden gate that let us post up in front of them. Um, in Eureka, we were on the waterfront there, so we were right under the, under the bridge. We didn't have to block anybody, but thank you to Eureka Public Works for helping us out. Um, the mast on the, the truck here has to go up a certain amount to get line of sight, to get the signal out, and all these technical things. Uh, and we had to park under the Samoa Bridge, um, which was too low, so we had to raise the whole Samoa Bridge by 20 feet. <laughs> we just picked the whole bridge up. Good thinking. Um, we just like, <laughs> use the bike, use the jacks, use the hand jacks. Just pick the whole bridge up. I just don't know out how much way. goes into this. this I know, is it's such a huge logistical it's a, thing. It's unbelievable. Getting it's all this to happen. <laughs> all for the glory. <laughs> Can I tell you like a real story though um, about Fernbridge? Uh, because, oh wait, no, here's somebody coming oh, to the, fir oh, yes. the finish line. That's good. I was about to ramble for a second about oh, it's the bridge rabbit. engineering. We love our crazy rabbits. Crazy rabbit. That, is that Don Clark on the, on the wascally rabbit? Yes. With his carrots. Ears looking a little floppy there at the finish line, but he's made it. <laughs> he also um, helped out a bit with the pageantry of Knights of Sabi. Oh, oh, because he he's, a yeah, he's a bunny. He's a bunny. A bloodthirsty bunny. <laughs> he came right in. Goodness gracious. Uh, so Fernbridge, where the racers crossed today, uh, historic bridge built in the 1920s. Uh, it's a beautiful bridge, like Art Deco almost looking, um, just gorgeous classical looking bridge. And back in the um, early 60s, they wanted to replace it. It's, it's a weird bridge, it's just old fashioned. It's very sturdy and very pretty, but it's like strange. It's flat across the top and it's got these steep angles on either end and it's super thin. Um, it's exactly the width of two lanes of traffic. So you can't, so there's no shoulder. <laughs> Not an extra inch. <laughs> uh, but while we're waiting, we're, we're waiting on just two more teams to come in. Um, so they wanted to replace Fernbridge. So they built another bridge upstream of Fernbridge. 
And then in 1964, there was an absolutely catastrophic flood, flood. in the county. Um, so much water and all of this huge flooding. There's there's high water marks on trees it's going amazing. through the avenue of the Giants. So like the water was so high way up there. <laughs> Uh, and so it took out all this debris washed downstream. It washed um, down the Eel River, including sequoias, you know, which are like, <laughs> like thousands of tons. And they come down, and all these trees come down, and they hit the new bridge. And they took out the new bridge, completely destroyed it, uh, washed the new bridge out. And then the new bridge and all of the trees that took out the new bridge washed downstream and hit Fern Bridge. <laughs> and Fern Bridge is fine. <laughs> so they just kept it. That's good. But they did not replace it. Again. The earthquake was a little dicey earlier this year. It but. did get damaged in the in the earthquake on uh, Christmas uh, this this last December. And then do you know did they? I know they, they fixed, fixed it. The, they the fixed footing. it. Yeah. Um, and it's just a it's just an icon. You know, it's just a, a local icon, and it keeps being surprisingly functional. So <laughs> they're just gonna keep using it. It's it's resilient. It's old school construction there. Uh, and it just puts us in mind of the fact that we're practically on an island here in yes. Ferndale. And they rerouted some traffic and made it kind of tricky today. Uh, and I think that speaks to the the bravery and the creativity of the glorious founder of Kinetics, yes. Hobart Brown, who came out here in the 60s to Ferndale uh, and decided to start an art gallery. Mm -hmm. And apparently got a lot of pushback from the community there, but then, you know, he worked his way in and just became a, a fixture here in Ferndale, an important part of the community, so much so that now they have a street named after him. So at first he was one of those hippie artist weirdos, and next thing you know, he's an upstanding member of the community who, you know, is just irreplaceable. <laughs> We had to get our picture taken by the official photographer. <laughs> We're hiding back here behind the Ferndale. Oh my gosh, is that, that's a Hobart puppet. Is that a Hobart puppet? I, I was wondering if that had a story. It really looks like Hobart. That's, if that's not a Hobart puppet, it's uncanny. Yeah, look at that. The little mustache has a feather entry. in his hat with the top hat. Oh, there was just... some water entry talking to the Muppets. Uh, yes, <laughs> they were talking to all the mayhem. <laughs> talking. <laughs> so we have the electric mayhem. Yes. We have the Hobart puppet. Of course, we have Bartleby yes. and the uh, the Kinetic Paranormal Society on their wardrobe, their crazy wardrobe. Um, Bartleby and Haas, <laughs> Haas, there, um, and the <laughs> artists there. That's a whole layer of, of, of artistry and story. They, <laughs> the Kinetic Paranormal Society, yeah, that's one of those teams that has a story. And year after year, they just evolve on it. Bartleby and the Magic Wardrobe and their crew. And every year, they have a different theme. It's all around the wardrobe and around the puppet. But um, but different this year, they're like fashion fashionistas. And do they still have the same award of uh, giving the Paranormal? Paranormal Award. I think they so, have, yeah. yeah, they have an award especially for the, for the team that's the most paranormal. There is the mm, the Mars rover has some Martians in the I don't I don't it's know. A little they, paranormal. Maybe maybe there's there's some that might. I bet they like spawn, spawn of the, of the dead because yeah, they're, like, <laughs> they're dead. They're <laughs> dead. Perky happy zombie kids. <laughs> mm. Uh, that is the head artist on that one is Isaac Bluefoot, yes. who I accidentally called Stephen. Oh no! On on Monday, but I, <laughs> no. this year Isaac apparently isn't here. He's been replaced by a um, a fashion model named Haas, who is just incredibly fashionable. He's just <laughs> fierce. Haas is fierce. I wonder if he's so hot we will, right now. He's so hot right now. <laughs> I wonder if we'll see the Kinetic Paranormal Society or if they have already magicked their way to the other side They're of crafty. the finish line. They get past that water part of it just what? with some magic. And <laughs> well, you know, it's because they can turn invisible yeah. is a thing, which is uh, weirdly not cheating. I don't know how, but somehow uh, them turning invisible in order to skip parts of the race or to uh, fly <laughs> over parts of the race. Like they definitely do the water crossing. They just do it when they're invisible, so you can't see them. Yeah. Just like apparently Fun Guy, whose machine broke at the bottom of Dead Man's Drop. He says yes. that they uh, they left the course and they fixed it, and then they went back to the bottom of Dead Man's Drop and human powered their machine all the way on day two, all the way from Dead Man's, did the water entry and exit <laughs> by themselves, Wait, what? and then rode all the way to Crab Park. Um, in just a few hours. They, That's uh, amazing. That is the story that they told me, um, which I'm sure is definitely true.
Yeah. Since I'm not a judge, they don't have to bribe me to believe these things. Like, I'm just, uh... <laughs> just gonna say, sure. Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> believe you? It's like, vouch for me. Vouch, vouch to the goddess for me. No, it's all you. It's all you guys. Good luck, though. Have fun with that. <laughs> uh, but cheating is definitely part of the part of the ethos here. <laughs> um, and it's a good thing that ki the, the kinetic community is so supportive and flexible and, you know, it's, winning is showing up. Getting to, uh, getting to the start line is really how you win the race. You, you show up and you get to have fun and that's, that's a success. Um, oh, it's a shadow. I thought the screen went black. No, we're just looking at a dog. We have a shadow. <laughs> or something. I don't know what we're looking at. <laughs> it's probably a dog. <laughs> because the people speak. Or, uh, we're going to oh, keep pointing the cameras at dogs and cute kids until another, <laughs> until another machine shows up. Hi. Because we're just back here hanging out with the kinetic. The, uh, the, the kinetic. This is a non kinetic vehicle back here. Oh, Plan B is being up close. I really love the eyes. I was a bit miffed. My husband used the things for the eyes on the other non that were used for a different crafting project. It looked conveniently there, and he took it. Oh, but dear. the eyes on the different sculptures always seem to be made from such interesting materials. <laughs> and the apple peddlers have uh, googly eyes, like on their helmets. They look like little yogurt cups yes. or something. <laughs> That's very clever. Like Magnus fan, Dr. T, and the Electric Mayhem with the Kinetic Madness Band. Good engineering on those hats. <laughs> yeah, I love how they have uh, so much motion to them. They're sprung so that they are open, and then you have to pull them to close, so as you bounce along, they have a lot of, a lot of movement. <laughs> and they're... Dancing with the yellow jackets in the streets. Very kinetic all <laughs> on its own. Uh, There's a lot of dance parties that pop up across the course. I like that. Sure. <laughs> Tonight, a train really had a good one happening at the Hummerton Park. Team Goddess there, always looking for a chance to boogie. And I should clarify, um, I was talking about Team Goddess, the, the judges, the other day, and someone thought I was talking about Team Goddess racing. Uh, the bunny gears up, the big hot pink bunny, that is Team Goddess racing. And then Team Goddess, we keep referring to Team Goddess, uh, and that's actually just the judges, because the head judge is the goddess Jenna, and so anyone on her crew of judges and timers and tabulators, we, we talk to them, uh, or talk about them as Team Goddess, because the goddess is the team. And then the goddess Jenna, one year, raced in this race, <laughs> with uh, the goddess Tina. <laughs> so confusing. <laughs> and then they, they're, they're good friends, and they're, they're both uh, coming out of Oregon. So they race together. And then um, they actually, uh, Tina continued to race, and the goddess went back to being the goddess. And they, um, and so they cut, they kind of split the name in two. So now there's Team Goddess and Team Goddess Racing. <laughs> and so on day one, I was talking about how Team Goddess knows who was up until midnight welding and one of the members of team goddess racing thought i had said that team goddess racing was up until midnight welding no. and they came and corrected me that they were ready damn it <laughs> darn it um that they you know they're coming out of oregon they're they're ready before they leave the house i'm sure definitely uh oh Whole community coming out here, getting festive. We love seeing uh, Ferndale dressed up. We seeing some, all the kids. All some kids have some ribbons out and about. Lots of ribbon waving and wand, wand waving. Kinetic pennants and flags. It's all for glory, and that's the the what the what they're doing it for. The races are all doing this for the glory, so that's what the crowds are giving them. That's what they're here for. And it is super fun when you're racing to just come around the corner. I remember the, the first year I did this, we were held up at the, for, the fairgrounds and then you come pedaling in and you turn the corner onto Main Street and suddenly there's just thousands of people, people. cheering. It's just as incredible as the plaza. For one year I was living on 8th Street and I had no idea that the race went that way and I looked out the window of my little apartment and there was this giant crowd. <laughs> Oh, you just, it just went by your house? It did, right, right by my house. That was fun. There's oh, the Kinetic Paranormal yes, Society. Fashion walking. They're cat walking. <laughs> I 
my first race I remember seeing, my dad had a sailboat and we were out on the water and we got to see the, the ducks. The ducks go cool. Ducks go oh, that's a long time ago. Yeah. yeah, there was a company called Yakima yes. that sponsored <laughs> sponsored a, um, a giant kinetic team. Uh, and they built ten vital men, and the folks at the Kinetic Lab built, I think there was nine or ten of them, maybe eleven, I don't know, there's a bunch of them. Um, and there were all these tricycles that strung together like a train. and his team of traffic control folks keeps everything safe and keeps a lookout so they know when the teams are coming in. Most of the part. There's even a very simple kinetic sculpture there on a skateboard. <laughs> but it's great to be a part of this from the beginning of the race on Saturday in Arcata through Eureka and then coming all the way to Ferndale. It's just such a joyous tradition across the whole county and being a part of many different different little bits and micro communities around our beautiful Humboldt County. But it is always one of my favorite things to be able to talk to people about where they come from, why they're here, what's their story. <laughs> go Bartleby, go. So glad they got their moment to shine. That's fantastic. <laughs> Hear some whistles. And Isaac has a um, the head uh, artist there. Oh, here Isaac we go. This a... might be the last one. Coming right in. <laughs> is that the last one? Which team is that? One twenty-one. Oh, team one twenty-one is. Oh, no, 121 is this feminist. Is it the train? Oh. Is it Shania? No? Oh, is it our is our friends early risers? Did they make it make it through? Oh it is that it is isn't that the early risers? I think it's the early risers. This is the team from Colfax High School that had a catastrophic issue, but they are still they did a great version of Old McDonald at the beginning of pageantry. We love the early risers. <laughs> they had a Big problem on the Simo Bridge after a few a few breakdowns, but then that was their big one that did them in <laughs> for the race. Oh, and what a what an excellent team to end on! I believe that is the last team <laughs> coming across the finish line for them to uh, have a catastrophic failure and then gloriously fix it and just make it to the finish line. And That's they, just perfect. They were so, so good. They were so cheerful and supportive of all the other teams. They were instantly turned their allegiance to untrained the other teenage teams. <laughs> <laughs> they were so fun. <laughs> I was searching everywhere for them at the water entry and I couldn't find them until they. Our train is broken. We're just going to find another <laughs> yeah, train they, yeah, and attach train, to it. They were so great. They just really. Um, they were so happy and, and into it. And one missed their high school graduation from that team. It's just their high school graduation sometimes to come up here to Kinetics. And it's only that's happened before. The students, they take yes. this class um, all, all semester long. They're designing and building the craft. So they don't get a chance to build a machine and then refine it year after year. They do it from scratch. That's it. And they're high schoolers. And then they travel, and this is their big final project. And uh, they get to bring it out here and run this race. And it's just, I'm sure it's a once in a lifetime thing. <laughs> and like it is for so many people, luck, lucky me, I get to keep coming back. So many people get to keep coming back. I'm glad that you get to keep coming I back. I am so glad I get to keep coming back. And my kids are involved. I got involved because my daughter wanted to race. And now she's racing this year, which is so cool. And my other one did a lot of biking this, this weekend. Didn't do it all, but that's okay. She aspires to do that next year. So my whole family's involved and it's really fun to get more people, rope them all in and find a place, okay. find a way that you can participate in kinetics. <laughs> From glorious spectator to spectacular okay. racer. 
spectacular racer. Well, I'm so <laughs> excited. I'm so excited that the next generation is coming into kinetics. You know, everything from starting out the kinetic classic yeah. to, um, you know, maybe <laughs> attending the rutabaga yes, ball. Yes, all the things. Attending the race, <laughs> participating in the race. You can be a barnacle as young as yes. 12 years old. So there's even some overlap between the classic and the big kid race. Uh, and then in no time at all, they're old enough to be racing and racing on their own. And it's just great yeah. to see so many new teams coming in and just carrying on this wonderful kinetic tradition. Um, it definitely hooked me into the county and I know it's hooked a lot of people and I'm so happy that we're also able to, to put this out live on the air on Key TV and on the Key YouTube channel to be watched after the fact. Hi racers, Hi. you did great. It was really fun watching you. <laughs> um, so I want to thank my co-host for these three days, Jackie Danino, Mayor Ken Bergel, and Shoshana. I want to take, thank everybody who's helped us out along the way, getting uh, getting us space, getting us electricity, <laughs> a 101 net link connecting us to the internet, the, the garden gate and the jam, and the hump, the, the store here, um, helping, letting us uh, basically- Humble home can. Humble, <laughs> thank you. Letting us uh, get in their way, essentially. And thanks to all the crowds who come out to Kinetic Universe, and especially to the racers for putting so much heart and soul and time and money and blood, sweat, and tears all for glory you deserve every ounce of it <laughs> um, so thank you on behalf of myself and Shoshana and everyone at Key TV I've been Katie Texas <laughs> and uh, have a great day it's all for the glory <laughs>